Hi, family. So I had not planned on posting any videos today, but as I was cooking dinner, I started to think about where I am now and where I was several years ago. And as I began to think about it, I began to just thank God for being faithful, for doing exactly what he said he would do, for never leaving me, for always believing in me, even when I couldn't see it myself. This is a word of encouragement for you all. And you may have experienced the same thing that, that I've experienced. Now, the Bible tells us that our ways are not his ways. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. And that is so true. When I look back over my life, when I look at where I am today, as opposed to where I was several years ago, my life is no longer the same. And it's all because he wouldn't let me go. God would not let me go, even when I wanted to. And the thing about it was, even when I wanted to let go, I still had a small mustard seed amount of faith. I didn't have a lot. I, I didn't have a lot of faith. I thought my situation was what it was. When I tell you my situation was not good, it was not good. I lost my dad back in 2003. I was a daddy's girl. Well, and I'm still a daddy's girl because I'm God's girl. But I lost my dad in 2003. Went through a divorce in 2018. Last year, 2023, I lost my mom. So from 2003, losing my dad, 2018, divorce. I was holding on to some stuff. And it was a lot of anger. It was a lot of pain. It was a lot of hurt. And it caused me to not want anything to do with God. For the longest time, I would question God, why, would, why did you take my dad? He was a good man. He was a godly man. He was a man after your own heart. Why couldn't you take someone else? That was my position from, 20, from 2003 up until about 2019, that's a long time, 2003 to 2019, what is that? That's eight, 15 years, that was my position. I didn't want anything to do with God because I thought he took my dad. So when it came to relationship, why would I want a relationship with God? And he took the thing that was nearest and dearest to me. He took away my daddy. I still have my mom, who's also the nearest and dearest. But my dad, he was the rock for our family. And I walked around with a heart that was partially hardened towards God. Now, even though I turned my back on God. There was still something inside of me that said, Monica, do you really think God is going to leave you and let you fail? Everything that your dad poured into you, Everything that your mom poured into you about how much God loves you. Do you really think God took him and that he would leave you in this position alone? Feeling broken. Feeling like you have no one. 
And I found myself in a place where I was making decisions that were not good. I was doing things that were not pleasing to God. But in that season, in that place in my life, I was trying to fill a void. I was trying to fill the void of losing my dad. And everything I tried, it may have worked. It may have healed the pain and not even healed. It may have put a bandage on top of the pain but it didn't heal the scars. And it wasn't until 2019, well, 2018 is when that conviction inside me began to make me think differently and say, okay, God, I need to turn back to you. I need to build relationship with you. I need to come back home to you. Because what I've been doing these 15 years, I'm still broken. I'm still hurt. I feel like my life is just, I feel like I'm stuck. That was 2018 when I started. 2019, November 2019, I was sitting in my family room. I fell to my knees in the recliner and just cried out to God to help me. I was done. I didn't want the life I was living anymore. I couldn't do it anymore. I knew there was something better. He had something better for me. Even though I experienced everything I went through those 15 years, I, I just knew, once again, that small amount of faith, it never left. Even when I left, it never left. And I know that was God. He wouldn't let me go. And that night, November 2019, is when I surrendered my life. Yes, nine, 10 years old, I gave my life to Christ, but it wasn't until 2019 that I honestly said, God, I give you everything. Take my life. My life is yours. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Wherever you want me to go, God, I will go because I can't do this anymore. And I know my ways aren't working. And if for the 15 years my ways haven't been working, I have nowhere else to turn but to you. And I trust you because at this point, I don't have any other option. November 9th, 2019, the journey began. That night when I said, I give you everything, I meant it. I didn't want the brokenness. I didn't want the pain. I didn't want the unhappiness. I wanted peace. I wanted love. I wanted joy. I, I just, I wanted to be free. I wanted to live. And that night, I was revived. God brought me back to life. Now it's been a journey since 2019, since that night, I can remember it. It's been a journey since then. But God has never left my side. He's always, always ordered my steps. And I've always trusted him because he's never failed me. And because I've trusted him every step of the way, I find myself here in a place where he is my everything. He is my everything. 
the relationship we have. I never knew real love. And I thought my parents, I thought that was like the greatest love. I never knew real love until I found his love. And I never go back. Once you experience it, you'll never go back. So I'm sharing this with you to say, trust God. Trust him to make your life right, to make it better. Even if you're looking at your situation and you're like, I can't see how I'm gonna get out of this. There is no way out. I've been in this for years. I can't get out. I've tried everything. And that's the thing. When you try your way, things don't always work. But when you try his way, when you let him order your steps, when you trust him and you let him lead you, he brings you to the other side, the other side of the rainbow. He gives you beauty for your ashes. So I just wanted to share this with you as a word of encouragement that if you find you're in a place where you're like, God, <laughs> I don't know what to do. I can't do anything else. When you're in that position, God is still waiting. He's still there with you. Even after you've turned your back, like I told you, I turned my back on him, but he never turned his back on me and he will never turn his back on you. You just have to get on your knees and call out to him and he'll be there. He'll turn your pile of ashes into something beautiful. So family, I pray that this encourages someone not to give up, no matter how bad your situation looks, and to fall on your knees and run to Jesus. Run to him. I can remember that night, November 2019, I was so broken that when I sat, when I, when I got on my knees and I, I was laying in the recliner, in the seat of the recliner and started crying out to God, I could just feel him hover over me and just wrap his arms around me. And I just, I just sat there for the longest time. And that's when the healing began. That's when the healing began. When I ran to his arms, not when I ran to a man, not when I ran to alcohol, not when I ran to the club, not when I ran to shopping, because shopping can be an addiction too. I use that as my way, as I, I would say, oh, it's my stress reliever, but it was actually an addiction. We can find other things to try to ease the pain when God is saying, come to me. I just want to hold you. I want to take the brokenness away. I want to take the, way, the pain away. I want to heal your heart. I want to put you back together again and revive you. Run to his arms because he's waiting for you. Family, I love you all. And I hope this encouraged someone to run to his arms because he's waiting.